I noticed there's a couple preppers with a debate on whether or not you should have a fire when you're getting home, bugging out, whatever. And the one prepper says you shouldn't have a fire because it'll give away your position. The other prepper saying you need to stay warm. Let me first tell you that the first prepper is correct. The second prepper is completely wrong. Now, let me explain why. Anybody that has started a fire in the bush, all right, you're not inside a house, you're not inside a building, all the heat goes up. I mean, you are going to need a fire that is so big, it is ridiculous if you plan to stay warm. And then you're actually going to have to feed that fire. The most that fire is good for, especially when you're in the open, is cooking a small meal. Now, when you get into people with teepees, for example, they'll set up an entire teepee and they'll have a titanium stove, a little one, weighs a couple pounds, and then they'll actually try to, you know, keep it fed with wood throughout the night. Now... The TP always leaves that much off the ground so carbon dioxide can get out from the actual tent itself. And then they got their titanium stove set up and then they're feeding it with wood and they got to process wood. So literally, you got two hours of getting wood and prepping and getting all that ready for the night. Now it might burn for a couple hours and then it starts to go out. You wake up because you're cold, you put some more wood in the fire and you do this process every two or three hours. You really don't get a great sleep. But you do stay warm. You can even dry your clothes. So that's kind of nice. But if you're planning on setting up a fire beside your tent, like the second prepper says, well, you're just looking for more of a disaster because sparks will come out of the fire and burn your tent down. You never put your tent near your fire or your hammock. So when people say you need to have a fire to keep warm, they're full of shit. Now, some people will have tarps and they'll put a fire in front of it and then it'll reflect the fire back a little bit. You can get a little bit of warmth that way, but they're running really cheap tarps and they really don't care if they get, um, you know, splinters in them and so on and so forth, fires, whatever. I mean, little holes, they don't care. This is my down sleeping bag. This thing cost me a lot of money. This is good for minus 10, maybe even down as far as minus 20, if you got the proper pad underneath you. I don't need a fire. I literally set up my tent, blow up my pad, put this on top, and I'm going to sleep all night. And sleep good, completely warm. If I need, let's say it goes down to minus 15 and I get a little bit of a chill, I can put some long johns on, a shirt, um, add some extra layers if I want. I do take an extra pad with me. I carry three pads with me, one for my dog, one for me, and I carry an extra pad in case we need it. And that's what I do. The second prepper had a situation where he almost died. And... He really messed up on video. He literally camped inside the tent. He put his head under the sleeping bag. Um, he basically made the inside of his tent like a sauna and just about killed himself. So he has no idea what he's talking about. He has no experience. So it scared him so bad that now he's scared to try anything. And he's now scared to get the proper gear. And that's what it was. And that's a bad situation because when you get a situation, and I always tell people, test your gear in your backyard. The second prepper actually puts people down and says, oh, they're in their garden. Um, no, maybe they're testing their gear and they're getting used to it. So he seems to want to push people to the limit where they run out in the wilderness and they do what they got to do. And there's probably very few people that have the equipment to do that because it's extremely expensive. I know I have it all. And if you don't have the equipment, then don't do it. Now, 
you've heard of people saying, oh, just fill up some garbage bags full of leaves, then you can lay on that. I wouldn't advise that. Now, it costs money to camp in the winter. That's all there is to it, and you need the proper gear. Okay, you can get into quilts that'll cost you six, seven, eight hundred dollars. Is what you can get into. But if you take care of them, they'll last you a lifetime. There was one guy I was watching on his hiking channel. He had bought a six hundred and fifty dollar quilt, and he's camping in the winter and loving it. But he had taken his quilt and went and sat beside the fire on his um, camping chair. Off came the sparks from the fire. They actually hit his quilt and literally put a hole in his quilt that big. He learned a very expensive, important lesson. Now, the company he bought it from sent him this human humongous patch that he could put on there, and it's probably going to be fine for the next five or six years. But he ended up damaging a very expensive quilt. So, number one prepper says don't light fires. Number two prepper saying... Oh, no, you got a fire, you're going to die. Number one prepper is completely correct. You really don't want to be lighting fires and giving away your position. When I go camping, whether it's with my son, my dog, or when we go, I try to go in such a way where where I camp, I'm hiding. I'll literally camp in a gully or down in a hole or inside a... You know, inside a place where it's very thick with um, brambles and everything. I don't want people to know I'm there. And I want to know, I want to see them before they see me. I want to see them and be able to say, enemy or friend. And that's all there is to it. There are many stories about, and you can look it up, of hikers going down the Appalachian Trail where some guy, some bum, somebody went off and started killing someone. Is what ended up happening. There's an old rule of thumb, and that is out of sight, out of mind. And that's it. I have been out in minus 10 Fahrenheit, which is way below zero Celsius, in my bag. And I woke up fine. I've even been in areas where the moisture was so bad that the outside of my tent was soaking wet. I, mean, I could wring it. And as soon as the cold air came in and I camped beside a river, well, the river of the cold, the cold from the river hitting the moist air literally turned everything to, into an instant fog. You were literally camping in a cloud. And now, of course, the temperature drops. Now it's even colder. So I come out of my tent about 5 o'clock in the morning and I just hear drip, drip, drip. Everything is soaking wet. Everything. Um, I didn't have my pack inside. My, I left my pack outside. It was soaking wet. Um, but everything in my tent was okay. It was a little bit damp. But it was okay. And uh, I was amazed at how much moisture was in that area. So experience does dictate a lot of what you do. Just because you're going to camp in your backyard and you got the right quilt, you got the right pad... And everything's good. And you say, oh my God, I slept good. It was minus 10 and I didn't get cold or nothing. Well, now you got the experience of knowing if you camp beside that river, between cold and hot air, it's going to generate some heavy-duty moisture. And I believe the second prepper had camped beside a beaver pond. And that's where it generated even more moisture. And with him putting his head in the sleeping bag... Um, I believe he was even drinking a bit too much, too, which I wouldn't advise you to do when you're actually hiking. So, should you light a fire when you're bugging out or, you know, getting home? You can do what you want. Personally, myself, I'm not. There's no way. I'm going to do what I've always done, and that's I'm going to hide myself in a gully or hide myself someplace in a hole, and I'm going to get a good night's sleep. And I'm not going to light no fire and say, hey, I'm here. The biggest fire I've ever, you know, I've lit in fires maybe that big room. And then I put a grill over it and cook my steak or I cook a hamburger. I mean, my fires are so small, it's unbelievable. 
And sometimes I've even dug a hole to put a fire down in a hole so where you couldn't even see that fire. But there's no way I've ever used a fire to stay warm in all my 60 years of life. Never. Either is my dad. Because the size of the fire you would need to stay warm is ridiculous. Now, when a fire is in a fireplace, it's inside a building, you're trapping all that heat. Understand, heat rises. So when you build a fire, heat's going up. 95% of your heat's gone. You got to build, even if I was to make this entire desk of fire, I might get some of the warmth off it. But to actually feed it and be up all night feeding it, I'm not getting any sleep now. And just like those teepees, like I mentioned, they get two or three hours sleep and then they got to feed the fire again and then they go back to sleep. They don't really enter REM. They're not getting a good night's sleep. Where when you buy a very expensive bag that is designated for that type of weather, you sleep, you know, eight hours straight. You'll probably sleep longer because you're not used to walking so much with your pack on. But you have to keep this really dry and... Uh, I'll link up to my last video where I explain that with my pack. But um, if I'm getting home or I'm leaving or something's going on, no, I'm not lighting no fires. I'm not waving saying, hey, here I am. That's not what I'm doing. A fire is nothing but trouble. And uh, that's all it is. Another thing to think about, even if I was to make a small fire, and let's say I killed a couple rabbits with my bow or whatever, and I cook. I'm not going to stay there. Okay, I would literally set my pack, hang it from the tree, and then I would cook my rabbit, eat it, put the fire out, throw my pack on and be gone. I would try to make it look like there was no fire there. Because somebody's going to zoom in on me with their nose. Since I quit smoking... Almost 10 years ago, I mean, oh man, I can smell things. It's unbelievable. It, it would really surprise you. If you smoke, when you quit after a year, you will sit back and not believe what you smell. Your smell just goes up. But people will zero in on where you're eating and you really don't want that. So you can do you. You can believe what you want. But I'm talking from experience. And uh, you're not going to build a fire big enough to keep you warm. That's all there is to it. Not unless you're some guy that sleeps with ice. I don't know. I'm not. I like to be warm. So when I climb in this and I'm on my pad and I go to sleep, I'm going to get a full eight hours. I'm going to enter REM. When I wake up, my muscles are going to be healed. I'm going to feel good. I'm not going to be sitting there with broken up sleep all over the place. And like I said, how you, if you sit up near water, you're going to get that, you know, that fog and everything's going to get kind of wet. You don't want to do that either if you can. I can do it because I'm experienced with it. Now, when you wake up in the morning, a couple hours after the sun comes up and now the fog's gone, the trees are starting to dry, you got to bring this quilt out and throw it across the branches and let it, because it would be a little bit damp. You got to dry it out before you use it for the next night. This becomes your number one goal. Keeping that sleeping bag dry if you bought a really good one. And not some twenty or thirty dollar one. You want something that's going to keep you keep you warm below zero degrees. You need something that's going to cost you a good four or five hundred, if not higher. So keep that in mind. And also a pad that's going to cost you three or four hundred. You need the proper equipment. And uh, that's all there is to it. You try to do survival and start to do fire. I'm telling you, it's not it's not going to work. You're going to get a very very unpleasant experience. But I plan to be. I guess you could say ninja camping is what I'm doing. And I can camp in minus 10, minus 20 below, doesn't affect me whatsoever. So you decide what you want to do, but I'm not going to be signaling and having somebody show up in the middle of the night without me knowing when I'm sleeping. No, thank you. Catch you guys on the next one.